Hey guys, welcome. This is Bex from the Tiny Fiber Studio podcast. And in this video, I want to show you what is in my Zuka case. This is what I use for carrying my Hanson Cross mini spinner around. And I wanted to give you a little tour of it and show you what's inside. Today, I've set this up as though I were going on some kind of spinning retreat. Normally, when I take this out and about, I'm normally going just to either a guild meeting or to just go and sit and spin in a local cafe, in which case I kind of know what I'm working on. What I've tried to set up here is a situation where you maybe need a little bit more equipment, just so that I can show you how much stuff you can fit in here. This is one of the Zuka bags that is of interest to mini spinner owners. There are two others, the Skipper and the Sport, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. But this is the Zuka Pro. These are traditionally made for makeup artists. So there are some kind of cool features that come in with that. First of all, there are several exterior pockets. So you have a, a long pocket on this side. There's actually an open pocket there as well. So you've got one zippered and one open pocket. You've also got a little pocket up here and then the same again on the other side. I don't generally use these pockets on the outside for a number of different reasons primarily because I'm in a country where it rains a lot and I don't want to leave something in there that could get damaged by the rain. The one thing that I do have in here though is in this pocket, I have a spare orifice threader because I don't know about you, but I have orifice threaders around the house all over the place, but you can pretty much guarantee that I don't have one where and when I want one. So if that's always in the pocket, and it never goes out of the pocket, then I will always have an orifice threader wherever my mini spinner goes. So that's the only thing that's in the pockets, but as I say, nice big deep pockets if you did need to put anything in there. If you were going to a retreat, for example, and you bought some fiber, that could all go in there. So that's pretty much everything there is in the outside pockets. On the inside though, this one opens with a little magnetic popper clasp and then there's a zip that goes all the way around the front door of the Zika. When you open it up, you've got your main compartment here, and then on the inside of the door, there's a whole network of different um, pockets and pouches and stuff that you could put things in. Honestly, I don't really tend to use those pouches a huge amount, just because by the time you've got things like the foam padding in here, which I'll come on to later. Um, when you shut the door, there isn't really a huge amount of room. Having said that, I did manage to fit about 500 grams of fiber down the front <laughs> earlier on when I was trying this out. So it's not impossible to get loads of stuff in there. I just don't use it a massive amount. What I do have in there though is an Acreworks spindle and its corresponding whirl. Um, always handy to have a drop spindle, I think, if you are going on something like a retreat because it's quite nice and quick and easy to sample. And if somebody wants to show you some cool um, drop spindling techniques, then at least you've got the equipment there to be able to practice with. There's also a few um, Acreworks business cards in there as well because people quite frequently ask about the bobbins or the spindles and I wanna be able to point them in the right direction. This pocket on the front here does unzip all the way round. So it does actually open out quite a long way. Again, the problem is if you actually filled it up by that much, you wouldn't be able to get the door shut. Possibly if I used less padding and I didn't use the orifice reducer, then I might be able to get some stuff in there. As it is, I don't really feel like I need to because this fits everything that I need without any extra space required. If I was actually packing for a retreat or something, it may be that I might put small items of clothing or things like that in there as well. You've got a little band here that you can attach stuff to. It's got three little loops, um, pouch pocket there and another zip pocket on this side. As I unpack this, you'll see that pretty much everything that you need, you can fit in the main section of the bag anyway. So I'm gonna pull out some fiber, first of all. 
a little bit of fiber in by the side of the boxes, some more fiber around the mini spinner itself. You could fit a lot more fibre than that in there. I did actually have about 500 grams of Corydale stashed in here earlier on. If I was taking this on a retreat, and particularly if I was going on a plane, I would definitely want to try and pad this as much as possible. It's perfectly secure in its little um, foam cushion, but I would still be paranoid and I'd still be trying to pad it as much as possible. Anyway. Underneath the mini spinner, I have two boxes. I'm going to take these boxes out and show you what's inside there. I'm going to save the pink one for a moment. Inside this one is all of the additional stuff that I wouldn't necessarily take with me if I was just going to spin at a cafe, but I would take if I was doing something like a retreat and I wasn't quite sure what kind of equipment I would need. So in here, I have the spare flyer for the mini spinner. I pretty much generally just spin most of what I do on the woolly winder, but I have the lace one. I also have the regular one. I barely use that at all, but the lace one would definitely come in handy in a retreat situation. And I've got the spare drive band there as well. I have three of the Acreworks um woolly winder bobbins so three of those the fourth one is already on the wheel i also have four of the lace bobbins and then i've also got the extra bits and pieces from the acorns lazy kate so the felt washers and I forget what they ended up calling these, but the little thingamajigs that you can put in the top of your bobbins or the bottom of your bobbins to stop them rattling around when you get down to not having very much on the bobbin. So anything Acreworks related really, plus flyers, goes in this box. So that's what's inside the yellow one. Uh, the pink one is the one that is stuff that I would take with me if I was going to spin in a cafe because these are all of the essentials that I feel I need for my mini spinner when I'm out and about. So first things first, with a mini spinner, you need power. So I have my battery pack and inside there is the connection that connects it up to the mini spinner itself. So battery, very important. Also the power supply for the mini spinner itself. Obviously, if I can plug into power, that's fantastic. You can't always, so I have the battery pack as, as well, but power adapter in there. Then there's the uh, foot pedal for the mini spinner. And the charger for the battery. Annoyingly, this has a European plug, so I have to have a European to UK plug adapter in there as well, which is kind of irritating. Uh, ideally, I would just figure out where to find just the UK version of this bit. Um, but for now, I have to have both the plug and the adapter in order to be able to charge my battery, which is kind of annoying. And it ends up looking like that, which is kind of ridiculous. Anyway, power for the battery. I also have a set of mini scales, um, drug dealer scales, as I call them. Um, these are just really, really accurate little set of scales, very useful for assessing the grist of your yarn. There's also the maintenance kit. So that contains oil um, lubricant for the woolly winder, uh, spare drive bands, spare brake bands, spare all of the things. So <laughs> quite handy. I am gonna change the case that this is in because the lid has actually broken. So that's gonna get replaced at some stage. Also have some paper labels 
when you go to a lesson or a retreat or something like that, it's always useful to have some labels to be able to um, label the samples that you've spun. So you have some clue of what on earth you were doing when <laughs> you spun those. I also have a couple of other tools for assessing the consistency of my spinning. So spinners control cards. Um, this is a, a VIP fibers one, which came from Sunnyvale in the US. Um, and then an Ashford WPI measure. That one's quite useful because inside the card, it has a list of um, all the different sizes of yarn and how many wraps per inch they are. Also have the orifice reducers. I already have one fitted onto the mini spinner and that just tends to stay on pretty much all the time. I think that's the smallest one but I also have the other two orifice reducers, so I keep those with me just in case I need to change into one of those. I've got my Acreworks Hedgehog Threader, orifice threader. This is the one that I use most of the time, but because it is the one I use most of the time, I always worry that I'm gonna forget it and leave it at home and then have to struggle to try and thread the orifice without it, hence the one that I keep in here. And then getting down to the last few things in this box, I have a Sharpie marker, um, obviously useful for the yarn labels that I showed you earlier, but also really, really handy to write onto masking tape. And the reason you might want to do that is because when you're putting the mini spinner in something like this, the foam padding, it's very easy for the dial to get knocked out of place. So it could be that you get home and you have no idea what speed you'd left the mini spinner on. If you have a piece of masking tape with you, you can rip a piece of masking tape off. Make sure that you detack it on your clothes before you stick it onto the mini spinner, but then you can stick it on and just draw a little line wherever the speed dial was. And then you know where to pick up when you get home. So the final thing in this box is my homemade contraption for attaching my mini spinner to the top of my Zika so that it's nice and secure. One of the great things about the Zika, which a lot of people use this for, is sometimes when you go to a spinning event of some description, you don't know whether there are gonna be tables available. You might all just be kind of sitting around in a circle and everybody else who's got their manual wheels, they just plonk their manual wheel down and they sit and spin. Obviously with a mini spinner, it's quite small and therefore unless you want to be trying to spin towards the ground, which would probably be not fantastic ergonomically. Um, the handy thing about the Zika is that you could put the Zika down and actually spin using this as a tabletop. Very, very handy. I'm always a little bit paranoid when I do that, that somebody might bump into the Zika and knock my mini spinner flying. So. I made this, which basically allows me to wrap this around the handle. And then I can use this long section to wrap around the mini spinner. I'll show you that in action in a little bit. So those are the two boxes. These boxes, by the way, are by a company called Wambox. They fit really, really well in the Zuka. Um, and in actual fact, the lid of the box is a perfect fit for the bottom of the mini spinner. So then I'm going to take the mini spinner out next. So I'm just going to slide the foam down, tip it forward and the mini spinner can pop out. So that's the mini spinner all set up. You can see what I mean by the marking of the speed dial. So when I get home, I can just look at that, put it into position, and then I know where I left off. That's all nice and protected because it's in that foam padding. I'll show you the foam padding. And I'll just pop the mini spinner over here for a second and I will show you the foam padding. This I made myself, um, it's really, really, really simple to do. 
I just got two pieces of foam cushion insert. The bottom one I just cut to size, the top one I cut to size and then cut the shape of the mini spin out, out of it, making sure that I left a little bit of space for the dial and the brake tensioner in there. Really easy and it protects the mini spinner really, really well. I then just sandwiched them together and stuck them together with contact adhesive. That has worked really well. Um, foam is one of those things that can be a little bit difficult to stick to something else or stick to itself, but contact adhesive has worked really, really well for me. So that is my custom built Hanson mini spinner foam cushioning. And then two more things that fit inside the Zika over here. I've got a Niddy Noddy. <laughs> this is the Ashford, uh, the full size Ashford Niddy Noddy. And I also have my Acreworks Lazy Kate in its little protective bag. Those fit down the very sides of the Zika. So uh, nice and protected against the, the side. What I would say is that if I was taking this on a flight, I would be careful to make sure that there's a fair amount of padding around the edges because it's only a thin layer of, of nylon between the two. So that's pretty much it. That was everything that was in my Zika case. So I'll just show you the, the strap that I was talking about earlier that I made. Um, when you want to use this as a tabletop, the mini spinner has to go this way. So what I did was I made this little thing that wraps around the top of the Zika, around the handle. Can be a bit of a tight squeeze. And then mini spinner goes on top of that. And then you just bring these two ends to meet each other and Velcro it down. You just want to make sure that you leave enough space to be able to still plug it in. But that means that you've then got a nice stable platform. And if anybody were to knock this over, hopefully you've got more chance of catching it before the mini spinner hits the deck um, than you would if this was loose and potentially could just go flying. So I find that really useful and uh, it allows me to make use of the Zika as a spinning platform, as a table, as well as just a bag to carry it in. The other trick the Zika has up its sleeve is that you can use this as a platform to sit on as well. And very handy for the makeup artist that it was originally intended for, but also very useful for anybody with a mini spinner who might be, I don't know, taking on an aeroplane or something. Um, good to be able to have something that you can sit down on. So that's pretty much it. That's everything that was in my Zuka case for my mini spinner. That was the Zuka Pro. The Zuka Pro is one of three bags which are of particular interest to mini spinner owners. There's the Zuka Pro, the Zuka Sport and the Zuka Skipper. I don't have any of the other bags to be able to compare it to. However, I have read through all of the bags threads on the mini spinner Ravelry group. Um, the difference is the, the skipper is a totally different bag. The skipper's like a, um, almost like a sort of laptop sized case. It's still on wheels, um, but the mini spinner kind of goes the opposite way. So it's rotated 90 degrees. Um, people seem to really like that. The good thing about the skipper is that it will generally fit underneath the seat in front of you in most airline seats. So if you want your mini spinner to be really close to you, that's a very good option. The Zuka Pro can be taken on an aircraft as hand luggage on the vast majority of airlines. However, I would always go prepared to sort of decant the mini spinner itself into another bag. So maybe packing the original burlap bag that it came in would be a good idea. The reason why the Zuka Pro can go as hand luggage and the Zuka Sport can't is to do with the wheels. So on the Zuka Pro, 
the wheels are um, sort of in line with the body of the bag. On the Zuka Sport, they're on the outside, so you get slightly more room inside on the Sport, but you can't use it as aircraft luggage. The wheels, by the way, are kind of like big inline skate wheels, so they give a really, really comfortable ride to your mini spinner. It's um, very, very easy to wheel. They're not sort of cheap plastic tacky things. Um, but then again, for the price, they should be because Zika bags are not cheap. <laughs> They're really quite expensive. However, if you've spent a lot of money on your mini spinner and you need to be able to transport it around, making sure that it's nice and safe, this might be a good option for you. So I hope that information was useful for you. If you did find it useful, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to hit the subscribe button to get any upcoming videos. I'm hoping that in the next week or so, I'll be able to do another video showing a different type of bag that you can use for your mini spinner. In the meantime, if you have any other questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. Hope that was useful. I'll see you again soon.